So I didn't record any of that, uh, but I want to say this is part two of week six. And, you know, we sometimes are privileged to have someone who's one of my advisees showing up for class. And, and we often have one person as a guest. Tonight, we have two people showing up as guests. Two people are my, both my advisees. Two people are in the trenches working in instructional design field. So they have rich experiences that they can lend to all of you. Now, as you know, we lost our guest, uh, Feng Kui Wong, who's probably the kind of, so another one like Rene getting like three master's degrees. He was in charge of the Chinese uh, student population when he was here. He was the president of the Chinese Association. And, um, and you know, he's such, he took over my classes when I went to a conference or whatever. He's that smart. Um, he has a master's, I think, in computer science, an MBA, ed psych master's, and a PhD in IST. So it's really sad we couldn't bring him in. But, but again, his mom's having a surgery today or tomorrow, so he couldn't be with us. And, and uh, you know, um, I'm so happy that Meng Wan could, could be called upon within a few days time. And she said, sure, you know, I'd love to come talk to your students. So she's the Associate Director of Research and Development at IEPUI. And I'll probably see her on Friday. We'll all be at the AMP. If you're in Indianapolis, come to the AMP north of IUPUI. But she's in charge of that um, IUPUI Cyber Lab. And she can tell us what the Cyber Lab does. Um, she arrived like, uh, 2010 maybe and exactly. then with with um with Shuya Ju who was my advisee and got her PhD and with Yu Ma who's up at up in Chicago um uh at a at a private school um and so the three of them I had three Chinese students in that class and actually four we had Jason in there as well <laughs> but yes. you know, the three exactly. of them really they helped me they helped me so much that semester in teaching my um, my emerging technologies course that I was I was so privileged to have them in class that the following semester I asked Meng Wan to be my TA. It's very rare that I ask a master's student to become my TA, but she she took over and was extremely helpful for me. And ever since then, um, I, I've always delighted to hear what Meng Wan is doing. But her undergrads in language and literacy area and. Um, she moved into I, IST uh, field with her master's and now is working on her EDD and coming up with topics just like Sunmi is trying to think about what will be the topic of the dissertation. Mm -hmm. So she's interested in, in innovative teaching and pedagogy and new technology products and they're building new technology projects right there at Course Networking. Um, she's, she's really interested in how to create training programs for others. And, um, and I think it's, you know, uh, we, you can read her bio that, that is in there, but I have 10 questions, 12 questions that I've put for you, but we have a jam board that you all can put questions down for her. Um, and I think what we're gonna first ask Meng Wan to do is show us course networking, I think maybe, and whatever yeah. else you have planned. Um, just go ahead and give us the tour, a guided tour, and then we're going to ask you some questions about all that. And and and, and then we'll talk about the internship possibilities and full-time job possibilities, right? Mang Wan. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. So we'll do all. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to begin with a uh, short PowerPoint I have prepared, and then we make that into course networking. I show you the learning platform my team has been developing in the past nine, 10 years. Um, and then I can open up for any questions. So, Wan, so before you start, just leave it right where you had it. Put, go, go back, go back. So we also have to thank her because this is actually a talk dated today. So this is brand new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have this PowerPoint stack and then I just <laughs> tweak it um, for various purposes. <laughs> Well, so uh, let me give you a quick introduction to IUPOI Cyber Lab. Um, the IUPOI Cyber Lab is an educational technology research and development lab on the IUPOI campus. So we have been uh, innovating and developing and commercializing education technology software. Uh, it is funded and directed by Professor Ali Jafari since 1996. Um, so the lab has been on IUPOI at Indiana University for more than 25 years. 
right? Um, the lab is staffed by faculty, staff, scholars, graduate research assistants, and undergraduate interns. I know we also hire graduate interns. Um, I think the title doesn't um, doesn't matter. Um, we like to um, recruit the talents and um, give students the real world opportunities. And we like to have students to contribute on this course networking, our current project. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a staff actually um, at, at IE Indiana University um, because the Sabra Lab is part of the IEPY, part of the Indiana University. Uh, so I guess it's more a research. For, yeah. Can I pause you for a second again? I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm. If you get a chance, just type in Wikipedia, Ali Jafari um, and IUPUI. There's a couple of Ali Jafaris. There's a movie actor and, there, you know, all this. But look up the Ali Jafari from the Indiana University. One. And, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, um, Wikipedia. Yep, he does have yep. a Wikipedia page. Yeah. And so he is known as the father or the godfather of the learning management system. Because he has built so Dr. Jafari's achievements in learning management systems, he's considered one of the global pioneers as one of Indiana's leading high tech stories and all sorts of things. I think at one point they said he was the like the godfather of the learning management <laughs> system. But um, you know, he was a Bloomington student in telecommunications when he had the idea for building this uh, in 1996. So he built. Uh, on course, which is the old platform before Canvas, mm -hmm. and and he built Angel. So Angel yeah. was sold to Blackboard, um, and uh, it was sold. I don't know, a hundred thousand, hundred million dollars, or something like that. Yeah, or, yeah. Ninety here, I have ninety-five million. Close yeah, so to he, million. he sold it, and IU owned thirty percent of that. So I that's the biggest uh, amount of money IU's ever made off of royalties. And so the IU didn't even know, didn't even acknowledge uh, the Angel project at all until the IU got the money, <laughs> seriously. And, uh, and Ali became kind of a legend, you know, within uh, the technology space within IU. And so he's built other things along the way, one of which sold to the New York Times, I think, an e-portfolio tool. Yeah, so you know, this you know, is the one you see here, the right. excellent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, if you get a chance to visit uh, Mangwan, get a, see if you can meet with Ali Jafari at the same, go to lunch with him. He'll tell you lots of stories. He's a delightful guy. He's originally from Iran, actually, and um, that's why they use, um, there's a certain fruit in Iran. I forget what that's called. Um, Anar, pomegranate, anar seeds. Pomegranates, yeah, you get uh, you get pomegranate and, and seeds. And, and, and anyway, she'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, that's just a little backdrop mm -hmm. to all this um, because Encourse was a tool we used before before Canvas. Mm -hmm. yep. Really, uh, Ali, who built the original version of Encourse, and that's led, there's a progression. All these tools led to, to another one. And so yes. Mong Wan kind of got lucky <laughs> in getting part of this project, one day Ali calls me and he says, who can I hire? Who's really good? And I said, well, you need to hire a Mong Wan job. That's who he <laughs> um, hired. Was that 2013 or when was that? Yeah, beginning 2013. I started yeah. working for um, Course Networking, Cyber Lab. Oh, almost a decade. Okay, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. Almost yeah. 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Hard to wow. believe. Yeah, so Dr. Ali Jafari is my boss. Um, he invented all these learning platforms. And uh, these are the major ones, the major successful ones. And then right now we are working on course networking. The course networking project, um, I think I have a slide here. So the course networking company was founded in uh, 2011 with seed funding from Indiana University. And then the next year, the platform, the CN.com was launched. So to this year, um, it's exactly 10 years, right? Maybe, yeah, even 11 years. <laughs> um, I joined the team in uh, the beginning of 2013, the beginning of 2013. So at the end of this year, early next year will be 10 years, will mark 10 years. Uh, course networking company headquarters in Indianapolis, but it also has international offices in Malaysia and China. The Malaysia office is mainly helping with um, uh, marketing and sales in Southeast Asia. We actually begin the, 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 the marketing, the sales and the marketing in Southeast Asia, and then moved back to, uh, to, to US, um, to the US United States um, in the winter of 2016. 
And then the China office, that's the course networking development office. So we have five full-time developers in China. Uh, some of them, they um, have been with us from the very beginning of course networking, very skilled and experienced. Um, and we also have, so in terms of the development team, the, um, the main development team is in China, but here uh, in the US, in Cyber Lab, we also have um, undergraduate students studying computer science or graduate research assistants studying um, IT, uh, computer information technology, um, study HCI, study computer engineering, uh, working in our lab, pro programming prototypes and helping with um, the software development and testing and rollout of the, the platform as well. Um, so based on Google Analytics, as of today, we have close to 2 million users from uh, more than 160 countries. So from the very beginning, we want to develop a platform, I want to move on to this one, I want to develop a platform that is truly social, global, and engaging. Um, we have been working on all these three areas, working really hard. Um, so the global part, you can see we have the very diverse and uh, international um, group of users. So coming back here, I want to briefly mention the core products we have developed over the past 10 years. Um, so the course networking began as a social learning management system, a social LMS. Um, I would say this was um, the focus of from 2012 to 2015. And then um, we realized it's kind of a difficult for institutions to switch from their current LMS to a new one. Back then, the competition in the US was really fierce because of the rise of Canvas. <laughs> and then overseas, interna international institutions, they really like Moodle um, because Moodle is open source and um, institutions could host the the software um, have the servers on their own campus. So they consider that's a very important security measure. Um, so it's really difficult for us to invade the market of learning management system. So we simplified the CM platform and come up with a social plugin tool that can be plugged into any learning management system such as Canvas, um, Moodle, Blackboard, um, desire to learn these learning management platforms as long as they support LTI, learning tools interoperability. So it's a kind of a technology for learning tools to connect to each other. Um, so very quick demo here. And this is course networking in Indiana University's Canvas. So I'm in a course, I click on course networking and this will open course networking in a new window. And then you can see this this, this interface, right, is very similar to um, Twitter, Facebook, to other social media, but it's specifically designed and developed for teaching and learning. Um, we, we keep the features um, that are really unique in CN, like the social discussion features, uh, hashtags, and we also have the NR seats, um, like the roster, which is like a leaderboard. Um, we also have um, badges, you know, these uh, motivational tools, and then users e portfolio, that's their profile. So we'll keep these unique tools in the um, LTI tool, uh, we we'll call it CN Social. And this was developed back in 2015. Uh, coming back to my PowerPoint. So the CN Social uh, here at Indiana University, um, I see more and more uh, faculty members are accepting this tool. Um, they're using this tool as a informal uh, social discussion tool to help them build a community um, for their class. But in terms of the, the, the sales and the marketing, the CN social, this plugged in social discussion tool isn't very successful. Um, I think it's because um, learning management system already has this discussion tool, right? A lot of faculty members are familiar with the discussion tools. They like to continue use the discussion tools, easy for grading. Um, and also this tool isn't something that they have to have. <laughs> and then there are competitors. Um, there are yellow dig and then um, so many um, online community building discussion tools, Piazza. So um, in 2017, around 2017, 
we start enhancing the user profile page. We turned it into a comprehensive social e-portfolio. Um, the e-portfolio, since I'm talking about it, let, let me just um, quickly show you the e-portfolio. So every user on CN has a profile page, which can be turned into an e-portfolio. We have been spending a lot of R&D um, um, effort on the e-portfolio in the past five years. Um, you can see this is my e-portfolio. Um, so I can have a bio, I can have a bio video, um, I can attach my resume, transcript. The skills section allow me to tag my skills or my academic interests. The blue ones are the one that are supported with artifacts. So let's say I want to show you um, my education technology um, artifacts. I click on it, will take you to either a document or some documents um, I uploaded to my e-portfolio or showcases I created on my e-portfolio or that could be a badge packed with the skill. Um, yeah, we have quite a few sections people can add expertise, others can come here to endorse. This is kind of like the, um, the competency skills feature on LinkedIn, right? And then um, document section, this is kind of unique. So students can upload their um, certificates, their work samples, um, and then organize them into folders. I don't have any folders, but we have that capability here. Showcases is really the backbone of the e-portfolio. Um, the showcase, let's say I click on presentation and showcase, and then it will take me take the audience to a default, uh, uh, sorry, a detailed <laughs> showcase section. And then here I can write about my skills, my experience. Um, I can tag demonstrated skills. Others can come here, endorse it. And um, I can also embed um, documents. I can embed images, videos, multimedia. And pretty much each piece of the content on my e-portfolio, they have a uh, unique, they have a unique URL. They also have the visibility setting. So if um, the owner of the e-portfolio doesn't want to share certain content to the public, um, they can choose to share with employers, share with their class, only their instructors will use the password to protect um, the content. And then we also have the, the badges, um, Feature so student can they can earn badges on CN if they also if they have um, badges earned on other badging platform they could also um, import them here or download a CN badge and put onto Badger or uh, Bradley those badging platforms um, recommendations so we have various features on the e-portfolio the e-portfolio the social e-portfolio uh, it has been accepted very well by the market. Um, so we have various institutions licensing the CNE portfolio. Some of them are high schools, project-based high schools. They want students to showcase their project on their e-portfolios. Um, we have um, um, career education, um, the career level high schools, and they have their student building a career e-portfolio. Also, uh, we have a higher ed institution, some of them, the entire institution adopt e-portfolio beginning with first year um, seminar courses. And some of the institutions licensing the e-portfolio um, within their specific programs, like their education programs, um, some institutions adopt the e-portfolio because they want to um, award their students with badges and uh, digital certificates. And some of the institutions licensing the e-portfolio for faculty members, for faculty PD and faculty uh, network. So they license the e-portfolio, they may use e-portfolio by itself, or they may use the CN e-portfolio in conjunction with um, the CN LMS or the CN social. And then during the pandemic, um, we did some enhancements to the CN LMS. Although I told you that the LMS didn't um, didn't sell very well, um, so originally um, the CN LMS. Let me go back to my CN account. Um, so this is my uh, CN homepage, and then from my homepage, I could go to my um, 
my course, my courses, or go to an academic network. Um, the original CN LMS look like this. Um, so this is this is our we'll call it classic LMS. Um, it's still being used. However, this task tool we have here, um, some some of the the the, the instructors um, and the student they feel is not very easy to follow the learning tasks here, kind of a hard to track what they have complete, um, what students have complete. So um, during the pandemic, because online teaching, online learning is so predominant, right? Um, the needs um, just grow crazy during the pandemic. And then we come up with another LMS course format is called Pathway. The Pathway courses look like this. So this is the pathway. You can see the interface is very, uh, it's, it's cleaner, right? And the course path leading the, the, the learning activities. So instructors are able to use the course path to sequence learning tasks and activities. And then the learners will come here and then we still um, incorporate our unique social discussion features. So like here, this activity is to prompt learners to create a post. And then after you post, you will be able to see your classmates post on this topic, right? And then you can comment um, on your peers' um, posts. And they move on, they just click on next, next, and this is a quiz. Um, very easy, they can complete activities. And then the completed one will give them a green check mark. Once they complete activities, um, within a lesson, the lesson will receive a green check mark. And then once they complete all of the activities and lessons, um, the platform can automatically issue a course completion digital certificate. Or if the course set up a course completion badge, um, student could earn a badge. Instructors could also um, issue lesson completion badge. So let's say after this Let's get started. If the instructor wants to insert a badge here, the badge will be automatically issued to the student's e-portfolio. Um, so <clears throat> this new course format um, gain attention from a professional, the professional training world. So we have licensees, um, they use our pathway LMS, this new LMS to deliver, for example, um, 100% self-paced DEI training to organization um, employees, executives, or professionals, um, and then some teacher training programs, licensing this tool to deliver online uh, teacher training to their, to their teachers. Yeah, so this has been uh, a little additional story and improvement of the, the, the CNLMS feature. Coming back here, um, Rumi. So Rumi, we also released it um, during the pandemic. Rumi is a um, AI-based learning assistant. Um, it actually is assistant not only to learners, but also to, to instructors, to teachers as well. And Rumi provide recommendations, um, recommending jobs, network opportunities, skills, and learning and teaching tips. This is quite new, and this has been R&D in the Cyber Lab by graduate research assistants. So it's a kind of a student-led project. Um, before the release, we spent a lot of time on the designing and uh, tweaking the algorithm, and it's still not perfect. Um, we are still um, enhancing the, the Rumi service, honing the existing features, adjusting the algorithm, and then also um, developing and adding more and more recommendations, new recommendations. A quick tour of this tool. So we had a lot of, uh, my team had a lot of uh, uh, discussion and debate where to launch this Rumi, Rumi feature. Um, okay, so sorry, let me go back here. Um, let me, let, let, let's take a look at the full platform. So Rumi is pushed to the top. Um, on the top navigation bar. And based on what content and the recommendations um, you are available to a user or a user um, tends to like to, to view those, those content. Um, sometimes you come into CN and then you may see a pop-up announcement from the top. And then you may see uh, Rumi recommend communities to you. 
um, these community are skill-based communities. If you add, they will add to your homepage, will add to your e-portfolio, and then you will be able to con connect with other learners and scholars um, based on your based on these um, um, interests, academic interests. And um, we also have the service of learning tips. <laughs> Just because I'm a very advanced user, so um, there's no tips to me. <laughs> um, but we are continuing adding more and more teaching and learning tips. Um, this is a, a little game called competition, community recommendation, we just look at it, uh, job recommendations. So far, this job recommendation feature is very basic. You can see these um, popular job platforms in the United States, right? Um, if I go to Indeed, for example, it's actually really taking me to Indeed. Um, and we filter, however, we filter jobs here based on the user e-portfolio information, like their skills, their major, and the location. Um, we hope that we will be able to um, recommend jobs directly here based on user e-portfolio, um, based on courses they take. However, working with these platforms, um, these job platforms is not very easy um, because these job platforms considering job posts on their platform, their assets. So they don't um, easily open up the, the sources for other platforms to crawl, <laughs> um, to directly pull the information into other platforms to use. Um, so that has been the, the reason behind the lack of uh, advancement here. Um, yeah, so, and then connection recommendation um, based on the common skills and interests the platform recommend other active learners, and then I may follow them, I may look at their e-portfolio. Yeah, so this has been the, um, the, the Rumi AI uh, agent feature or a tool we recently released to the users. Um, yeah, so um, I just have one last slide here. This is course networking <laughs> from 10 years ago. So yesterday, um, I went back to my emails and then some old working documents and um, gathered a couple of screenshots. And you can see what the platform looked like 10 years ago. <laughs> Let's see um, your picture from 10 years ago and see if you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think yeah. you have, but okay. <laughs> oh, this one? <laughs> is that you? No, this is not me. This is a <laughs> faculty member on the platform. Yeah. Um, oh, but this course, Dr. Bunk, I think this is your R6085. Yeah. 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 The fall of uh, 2012, you were piloting course networking, and uh, somehow I have a screenshot that's of it. Scott, okay, my, my advisee, Scott. So that's before it became R678. That was, must have been the last semester it was 685. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, Dr. Bunk piloted the, the old course networking, but definitely yeah. a lot of um, um, enhancement and, uh, and changes had happened um, after that. So <laughs> We compared it to Piazza, actually, that semester, which Meng Wan mentioned, where students can rank the level of que the questions and then they can vote on which questions can be, should be asked and Yes, kind of yes. I remember that class. I think um, I sat in your class um, and then you you were comparing uh, course networking, Piazza and Canvas discussion board. Right. And back then I um, had not working for course networking. So I remember I preferred Canvas discussion <laughs> um, over the other two. So now I look back, I think the reason um, for the preference is is probably the familiarity because, um, you know, students were more familiar with the, you know, using the uh, LMS's discussion tool and then having um, instructor organize discussion topics. In CN, it's more um, informal and students led, so it could be uh, a little overwhelming. Um, it could be uh, confusing, you know, where to find posts. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we um, we worked on a lot of uh, enhancements. Like we um, we add search posts. You can search a post based on hashtag um, keywords, and then we 
add in um, the, the social discussion features like hashtag. Um, if I'm interested in, say, in this biology course, I want to look at all of the discussions about cells, including hashtag cells, I'm able to find these posts. Um, various yeah, various um, post filters we add in. You know, you could based on time frame to find post, um, say, created from the beginning of February to now. Um, and then you submit the filter. So, yeah, so we, we add in these features, try to, try to help learners, um, help, help instructors to guide, to guide learners. And it goes back to metacognition is the topic of tonight, cognition, metacognition strategies for learning. Mm -hmm. You're setting up metacognitive aids there, you know, um, which, is, which is critical. Uh, and that's the, what, in, what you should be doing. Um, we probably should open up for questions though, because you know we don't want to have too much of your time. Um, that's a good tour that you've given us, a great tour. Does anyone want to yeah. start us off with a question or has anyone posted the Jamboard? Everyone's quiet. <laughs> I see Renee has a question, right? Renee. Go ahead, I'm... Renee, go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead, unmute. Renee. Is my audio working? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm curious about that e-portfolio uh, mm. feature. If um, students build their e-portfolio, um, that feature is enabled in the course. Um, can they be transferred to, like, for oh. people outside you? So they yes, can yes, yes. Well, order? you asked a great question, Renee. So uh, we claim the CNE portfolio is lifelong. <laughs> um, so say you, you, you created a CN account and then start building your e-portfolio at IU, and then later you um, you leave IU, you transfer to another school, you can always go back to your e-portfolio by logging into course networking, um, or you memorize the URL of your CNE portfolio. Each e-portfolio has a unique URL, and then you use your course networking account to log back on. And then you can continue to create and build your e-portfolio. And then our integration with other learning management system um, work really intelligently. So let's say, uh, Renee, later you move on to another institution that licenses the CN, plug the CN into their learning management system. Um, when you click through that learning management system, um, CN can sense that's you, or when we ask you, do you already have a CN account? And then you can say, I do, and then connect account. So um, the learners will be able to continue to build on one single e-portfolio. And then we have features like you could um, archive old content if you, you know, grow some content and then you don't want to delete them, but you also don't want them to show on your main page. Mm -hmm. So the idea is within the course period of time, they just build that like within the course and later they can use a URL to trans transfer that to you. Like um, the, the URL and the ePortfolio itself are lifelong. Um, Dr. Bunk's class may prompt people to create a showcase as a course assignment, right? Then the other course later may prompt you to create another showcase on your ePortfolio. So we have been encouraging um, ePortfolio licensing institutions to continue to, to come up with the implementation plan um, and have the institution-wide initiative to constantly bring students back to their e-portfolio and continue to build it. And then if one day you leave your institution um, because you have access to your course networking account, you can continue to build your e-portfolio. Update and share, and yeah. So I hope I answer your question. The, the e-portfolio is not um, one e-portfolio specifically for a course. So the e-portfolio is person-based, is user-based. Thank you. Okay, who else would like to ask a question? Uh, I have a question. Uh, you can go first. Uh, you, you, can, you can go first. <laughs> yeah, it's a simple one. So do you have any mobile version for this course networking? Mobile version? Uh, Mobile version. Yeah. yeah, so that's another story. Um, course networking, we had mobile apps, native apps. But mm -hmm. then um, 
just because we are um, now that I speak as Canvas or Google, um, it's really difficult to maintain um, multiple platforms. You know, you have the web version, you have um, Android, and then you have you have um, iOS. Um, I, yeah, iOS. So um, a, a few years ago, about three years ago, um, we removed our mobile apps and then we made our web websites mo mobile responsive. So I can say the platform. 90% is mobile responsive. You can see I'm shrinking the set, but um, I should not do this. You know, um, the, the best way probably is you can view, uh, you, can, you can use the browser simulator um, and you can change to, let's say we look at Pixel 5, right? Um, the, the platform, this is ePortfolio. Um, we make sure it's display um, pretty well on all mobile sizes. And then the pathway LMS is also very mobile responsive. The old classic LMS, when there are big tables, like gradebook table or you know, um, where instructor go great students, the Dropbox table, those are kind of a, a little difficult. You have to school, um, but we have been, um, from time to time, um, we have been trying to make our forms mobile responsive. So the, the website is mobile responsive. You just go to the um, browser on your mobile phone and then you will be able to access the content. What about web app? Nowadays, many company are using web app. That's because you use that. Oh, app. web app is another. Yeah, so we are another? a web app. Yes, it's the same thing. Okay. You know, you can say my, our website is mobile responsive or you can say this is a web app. Yes. Okay. So web app is web based, it's website based. Um, native mobile apps are the apps that you download from uh, Apple yeah. Store, yeah, App Store or um, Android Store, Google Play. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then I, I have one more question. Actually, I'm really interested in Lumi. You said yeah. that it's a personal assistant. So is there any notification functions so mm -hmm. I can get updated information for me? That's because I think that it's, you know, can, kind of... Uh, created based on my background, my interest, my skill, something, right? So yes, is there yes, some yeah. notification? So the, I can get it? The, yes, the platform itself already have um, the notification. So let me oh, um, exit okay. from here. Um, like this is the notification bell, right? When I click on it, I can see, oh, someone recently read my post, um, someone viewed my ePortfolio, um, joined my course, things like that. Uh, Rumi also send out mm -hmm. notifications, but um, we have been using Rumi to announce ePortfolio updates on your ePortfolio primarily. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Or the yeah, or licensed institution could um, send out announcements to students through Rumi. Uh, let's say there is a uh, big campus event, the campus could announce it, um, or um, you know some technology updates. Or school closed today, <laughs> if yeah. they like to use Rumi, if they use CN as their full learning management system, they could use Rumi to make that kind of uh, announcement as well, notifications as well. Okay, thank you. That's great. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, Paishan. Uh, uh, hi, uh, thank, hi, you for your yeah, hi. <laughs> thank you for your sharing. Uh, I, I thought that uh, those projects are very uh, innovative. And I thank have you. two questions about uh, your sharing. Uh, the first one is about uh, e-portfolio. Mm. Um, um, I, I was responsible for the e-portfolio when I was working at National Taiwan University. Mm. And at, at that time, uh, we found that it's very hard, it's very hard to encourage a student yeah. to engage in yes. their uh, profile. Yeah, totally even agree. though, yeah, even though we built up, we built up their uh, basic profile for them. Yes. But we still need to uh, we still need to uh, need them to yeah type their their own learning activities mm -hmm. uh, in this platform. So my first question is how to encourage students to use a portfolio, and uh, my second question is about Rumi. Mm. I think that's a very uh, uh, attractive, to uh, interesting tool. For me, 
and I reviewed your website, it says that Rumi can serve as a caring classmates mm. to the students. So um, I just wondering the details about this function. So could you share more details? Definitely, us? definitely. Thank so the you. first question, e-portfolio, I totally agree with you. Um, watching institutions using the CNE portfolio, um, I see if you have this um, bottom up approach, it's really difficult. Um, we have licensed institutions took this approach, um, didn't um, implement very well. And mm -hmm. when you take a top-down approach, the adoption will be much higher. So we hope the institution um, leadership will first uh, get on board and then they support the e-portfolio in their various mm -hmm. initiatives. And then talk to the, um, the school, um, the school chairs and department, um, the, 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 the school deans and department chairs, and then down to individual instructors. Mm -hmm. And we have been coming up with strategies like um, deep e-portfolio integration um, um, assignments. So let's say a, a program, IST, um, decided to implement e-portfolio, they may identify core courses. Say IST identify 10 courses, 10 core courses, and then each faculty member will um, implement a e-portfolio signature assignment in their course. So that assignment could be at the end of the semester, have students create a showcase reflecting on their learning experience, right? Adding um, their course artifacts. And then could also be if the course has a major project, have students to, um, have students to document their project. Um, it could also be having students simply writing reflections to connect what they learn um, in a, say, a foundation course and how that could connect to um, future, their future career their major. So help students to, to, to do reflections, um, but make it a assignment based, <laughs> credit based for credit. Um, and then if various faculty and various programs using the e-portfolio, student will have the opportunity to constantly go back to their e-portfolio Right? And then they will continue to build the e-portfolio. And then Capstone course um, could leverage um, the opportunity to have students polish their e-portfolio and think about using e-portfolio for job applications. And then um, we also encourage institutions to come up with uh, incentives, maybe based on the student e-portfolio, um, the NRCs they earned, um, give them badges um, or have a symposium, have students present their e-portfolios to each other. Does anyone um, else have a, go ahead. Oh yeah, the second question, very quick, the, the, the Rumi. So being a classmate, um, so that part where <laughs> we still need to develop, I, as I said, the Rumi is still very, um, pro, you know, very preliminary. And the learning tips feature that we have, um, I think somehow serve that purpose, um, but still we need to um, continue to develop the Rumi as a learning peer or a classmate. Uh, Renee wants to jump back in. Renee. Thank you. You have. Oh, I, I was just wondering if. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm you. just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any like ready to go kind of resources for educators if we're introducing the tool. Mm, yeah. Um, so the course networking has a support center. And this is something um, I want to mention these days, a lot of educational technology platform, if you want to really see um, how it work, you can see if they have some kind of a support center, help center. Um, let me put the URL into a chat box um, and you will be able to come here. We have um, we listed our different products. And um, for example, the e-portfolio, the get started part, you can watch tutorials. And then with detailed features, um, we also have um, some additional materials for each type of tools. Anyone else have a question before we end with this? Anyone else? I've got a bunch. I haven't asked yet. <laughs> so, um, so what were the responsibilities briefly stated when you first started this job? And what are your responsibilities now? Or stated yeah. another way, you're having so much fun and they're actually paying you to do this. 
Yeah, I do think I'm having a lot of fun. So looking back already, I have been working um, at course networking for almost 10 years. I feel it's like a blink <laughs> already 10 year, uh, 10 years. Uh, so at the beginning, um, I remember I, um, I talked to IU faculty members. Back then, they just um, integrated the course networking into on course. So I talked to, I may talk to one of uh, each faculty uh, or talk to some to some programs, give them training, bring the feedback back um, to the development. Um, I helped a um, faculty created a MOOC course, <laughs> the first MOOC on, on, on CN. Um, yeah, so now um, I'm still doing a lot of the same same kind of a, a, a job tasks, but I think it's at a higher level. Like I'm, I'm not um, dealing a lot with individual faculty members. Now I'm helping institutions, like lic licensing institutions, coming coming up with um, implementation um, plan, and then um, kind of a play the uh, consultant role, helping them implement the technology within their so, various programs. So um, action research. In some well. ways, <laughs> the first, yeah. part, first part was action research, mm -hmm. you know, interviewing faculty about their needs and they redesigned the tool based on the interview results. So, you know, more practical in nature, right? Yes, um, yes. And so forth. So um, you already talked about what features the CN is working on. So it's still being built out. There's still new things being added. Um, would you say, um, is this position the type of job that you imagined when you were a master's student, or is it was it is it totally different from what you expected? Mm, to to a certain extent, um, I believe after I graduate, um, or right before I graduated, I wanted to find a job like working um, at CTL, um, helping a institution, their faculty members. Um, implementing education technology, um, helping with instructional design. This job kind of bring me to the other side. <laughs> um, I'm more as a tool provider, developing a tool, but because of my unique role here in a um, technology R&D lab um, at Indiana University. So IU faculty members are also my colleagues and they kind of are helping me um, with the R&D of the technology. Um, I provide training and support to them. They bring feedback back to me. Um, so yeah, um, there are similarities and differences. Um, is the, the development team, you said is in Malaysia and in China, right? In China, the, the main development team is in China. So in the 10 years or even before the 10 years, what's been the most exciting part or project that you've? Um, I've worked on various projects, um, helping different institutions, um, different faculty members. So one is um, the SDG course. So I helped the director of the uh, partnership of International Affairs OIA at IUPUI during the pandemic developed the course on SDG, connecting IUPUI honored students with students from University of Rwanda. <laughs> um, so that course was very successful, implemented a lot of unique CN social learning features and students were really engaging. Um, and um, I, I, right now I kind of bring that experience and I am um, working with my, my team. I want to enhance the discussion features on CN homepage, which is the global discussion. We try to support global conversations on sustainable development goals um, and form this kind of uh, social um, learning environment and community for all of the CN learners. I think the most exciting part is the global learning part of the CN. And we um, connect learners around the world together and uh, we learn together and then we do something um, for our world, um, for our planet. But you still have skills you're learning. I know you told me two years ago you took a course on machine learning because you gave me the certificate. <laughs> so what kinds of courses are you still wanting to take or are you taking now to help in your knowledge? Um, so um, I have been using LinkedIn Learning a lot and I want to let all of you know as a Indiana University student and faculty staff, you can access LinkedIn Learning for free. There are tons of professional development 
courses there. So um, like recently I took the, um, there is a, um, a series of courses on instructional design or design training um, for professionals. So um, I listened into that, um, that's the, the course of program while well, I driving um, and, you know, getting the certificates is kind of a really fun. And then I um, always listen into Dr. Bunk's recordings, um, 511 course recordings or the super lining uh, recordings and always get new ideas. So those are most of the questions I had written down. I want to go back to the people attending here to see if anything is that they, they want to ask of, of you because you're not with us long. We don't have any, much more time. So does, does anyone have something posted to the Jamboard we haven't asked or any question that's come up? It was really quiet. <laughs> So there is one important thing left, Meng Wan. Oh, Two important Pris things. Yeah, I see um, Prisica also has a question. I can stay a little bit longer. I really so enjoy it. There's two it. important questions yet to ask you. So who has a question? It was, it was me. I just kind yeah, of raised Prisica. my hand. Yeah. Hi, Prisica. <laughs> I was I was just interested, and you mentioned really quickly something about Rwanda and working with uh, their university on something and I was curious to know what was the the project and what was the outcome basically how did you guys connect um so we have a because the CN is a global learning platform right so we have uh, licensed institutions from all, all over the world University of Rwanda through a special um, program they are using course networking and um, this director of uh, partnership in the office of uh, international affairs at IEPUI. Um, back then he taught a course to honored IEPUI students. And then he got connected with um, a faculty member at University of Rwanda. So they form a class on CN, um, it's a virtual, we call it a virtual exchange course virtual exchange, virtual study abroad during the pandemic. Um, so they were able to use course networking, this is social learning platform to have students from the US at IEPUI and um, students at University of Rwanda in Rwanda um, talk to each other. And then the topic um, is SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. So there are 17 goals, United Nations identified for all countries and human beings. Yeah, so that's their learning subjects. Um, the learning outcome, I think, is to enhancing people's understanding um, of each other's culture and also um, try to tackle those real world big problems together. Um, Students, they had discussions on SDG topics about their culture, and then also um, they form teams and come up with posters on SDG topics and how to, for example, how to um, um, solve the problem of hunger and poverty. And so students brainstorm the ideas and then they, print, they, they bring in various um, resources and evidence to support their argument. So Kim Travis has come in from my other class and she's been working with another student on looking at e-portfolio tools. And I gave her the wrong time. I, I had seven, I, my other class would do an hour later and so I messed up the times. Can you briefly pull up the portfolio, the e-portfolio tool within the CN, just Definitely. so she can see what it is? And um, I don't want you to explain the whole thing again, but it, you know, you can maybe give us the one-minute overview of it, and then I have two more questions to end. Yeah. Yeah. So Kim, this is the CN e-portfolio. Every CN user get a e-portfolio, um, and actually anyone um, around the world can create a CN, free CN account and then build their e-portfolio. Uh, you can see the, these are the um, sections and um, they can, student can upload documents to the document section. We have various privacy settings to protect student privacy. And the showcases are the backbone of the e-portfolio. Um, so, Students can create detailed showcase sections to document their competencies, their experience, their um, learning artifacts. Yeah, and we also have badges, um, mm. recommendations that kind of leverage the CN social learning characteristic, and then um, additional sections. So we also have some uh, 
some features like find jobs, you can create multiple versions of their, your e-portfolio. So each one will have a unique URL you can send to um, different employers and um, yeah, <laughs> features like that. Um, I will, if you look into, I, I, will, I will send a, a, a URL to a e-portfolio um, video in the chat. So Kim, you are able, you can watch the video. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much, Alice. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, I have that a question. Great. That is really great. Um, I just hang up. Just, yeah. Um, so, um, Kim, you can get um, Meng Wan's email address. Maybe you can talk to each other, but it is free. Or if there's a free account, so you can play around with it a bit. So, Kang Wei? Kang Wei? Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question, not just for Meng Yuan, also for the IST program. Because I... I'm not in IST, but I know that IST um, require for e-portfolio because me in science education, we require for portfolio, but not e-portfolio. So is the e-portfolio in IST could be conducted in any uh, format, like they could finish it in this website or is there any requirements for e-portfolio? So probably we need to double check with the IST e-portfolio committee. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> um, curious, can uh, IST PhD student, student use this for their e-portfolio? Um, when I was an IST um, student, I created my e-portfolio using Wix. So the, the website building tool. Um, back then there was no requirements you have to use which one you pick your own tool um i don't know if now isd has this requirement because isd students need to have some kind of a website building skills so whether they require students to create their own website if they so have to create their own mm. so basically every uh, phd student in isd have their personal uh, website right master student right master IST master students need to graduate with a e portfolio, I believe. That this was a requirement when I was with the program. I don't know if Dr. Bunk knows. <laughs> well, Elizabeth runs it as a studio program. That, Professor Bowling has a studio master's now. Mm -hmm. It's run a bit differently, kind of like cohort based and um, project based and internship based, you know, less course based. But they have they have portfolios on there, but not. I mean, everyone does a different portfolio. There's no tool I think that they have to use, right? Yeah. Any other questions, comments? I have two. You said that there's internships and that yes. there could be full time jobs. Can you explain what? Um, not long, but just kind of briefly how what the internship would be and how likely it could become a full-time job? <laughs> yeah, so this internship, um, we prefer master student <laughs> um, over PhD. So I want to be clear at the very beginning, um, just because um, master student, they are more hands-on. And then we hope that if a master student start as a part-time um, or intern, and then after a while, then there may be a chance that they can become a full-time employee. Um, the opportunity is from IUPUI Cyber Lab. So it's actually a Indiana University on-campus job. It has the advantage, especially to international students. I know during semesters, international students are not supposed to work um, outside of campus. Um, so this job gives you a on-campus experience and it's related to IST, yeah. And so then it's, the, a, it's kind of a startup company, but yet in a university environment. So it's kind a, of the best of both worlds. And you have a, I think a, so. a, a safe paycheck <laughs> and yet kind of fun and creative and innovative things going on all around yeah. you. And it's a, build, yeah. it's a building that's really beautiful, too. So uh, in, a, in a good part of campus. So, you know, it's, it's ideal, you know, for someone starting up. And, and, so I have a second question, if you finished with the... In, so, Meng Wan, like Sun Mei, I'll talk to after class tonight. Can you give us a time in which you will turn in a dissertation proposal and a date in which you think you're going to defend your dissertation? Oh, mention the date? What date will you have your proposal done and when will you defend? 
So I'm taking the uh, dissertation proposal course. Um, I think the day to turn it in is um, April the 30th to turn in the proposal to the course. Um, I hope to defend my proposal at the end of May. Okay, and then yeah, yeah. within six months, defend your dissertation or one year within a year? Um, I hope to complete my, my degree, <laughs> EDD, by the end of this year. By the end if, of December. Yeah, okay. if it's not. So I wanted her to, to say it on camera. So we have a commitment on oh. the video. I'm going to, it's re, being recorded now. Does Sun may want to give us a similar commitment or not? Actually, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not right now. Actually, I decided to take a, a little bit time. That's because mm. nowadays I'm so busy. Yeah, especially my work is really busy mm. nowadays. Last night I work at, you know, 7 a.m. Yeah, even so. I just yeah to, yeah, yeah me time. too here <laughs> the EDD um really you know you have a full time mm -hmm. job and then I also have two little kids and the ED <laughs> so it's it's really a lot um yeah um, so, take take one day at a time <laughs> so Friday we do have an EDD defense as I mentioned Rob Elliott and I think I may have sent you all the link if not I you can all attend at one o'clock. Anybody in Indianapolis can meet up at 3.30 um, at the AMP. Um, but I ordered t-shirts for Rob and, and, and I and for Dr. O, who's coming with us, but Dr. O might not want it. And on the back of the shirt, it says, look, IU Bloomington IST ranked number one. In the oh, it's very cool. On the sleeve, it says uh, U.S. News and World Report number one program. I don't know if I can get the sleeves to work here, but uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah. And on the front of the shirt, so Friday is my 700th day running. So uh, <laughs> it says on their 700 club, the 700 club. President McRobbie and his wife. Oh, oh, I see. Wow. And then underneath that, it says, um, the mm. So my little fun thing for the week, I designed the shirt. Um, <laughs> but I don't tell, we're not testing this out until Friday. Um, don't tell Dr. O either. Um, so <laughs> Renee, I'll, if you I'll come with, I'll get another shirt, you know, <laughs> Renee went with me on my last road trip to Indianapolis. We went to the garage for lunch. It's mm. an old bus depot that's into restaurants. Now we're going to the amp, which is near a tech park, a bunch of, uh, restaurants spring up it's there too. It's five minutes drive from the Cyber Lab. So I will so be there. <laughs> I need directions, to, but anyways. So uh, we want to thank Meng Wan for coming on short notice and being very informative tonight. And uh, it's great to see someone's career really take off even before the EDD. And I know it's going to take off more after. So give her a thank round you. of applause. Thank and, you, everyone. <laughs> and, uh, nice to meet and see you. And, and as you can tell, Meng Wan's one of the best people I know. Um, and she'll answer any question you have. Uh, and to the best of her knowledge, she'll, she'll try and find an answer. You will not. You will not mm, um, find your email unattended. She will respond. And so, um, so yeah, we, we uh, definitely enjoy having her back in the program as an EDD student. She pretty much was an EDD student as a master's student. So, um, you know, and so let's take a five minute break. I'll come back and finish on condo theory. Those of you who aren't part of our class can kind of go on and have, have, uh, uh, the night off and, <laughs> and, and get, a, get some time to meditate. So thanks for coming. Anyone who's not part of this class, thank you all for coming. And uh, the, all these comments on the side, thank you, Renee. If someone wants to put three words for Meng Wan in the chat window, yeah, so. Um, the patient already called me Dr. Zhao. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paige. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah, you will. You will be. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, so everyone. Soon. Yeah, yeah, good night, Mang Wan. Good to Bye see you. you. See you on Friday, Dr. Bunk. Bye-bye, everyone. See you on Friday. Enjoy okay. the evening. Yep. Yeah, Bye-bye.
So I'll be back in three minutes. I won't take long to take my break, maybe five minutes max, and just go for 10, 15 more minutes, a little bit more on cognitive theory.